One of the single most frustrating things when starting out with a new music software is not having your audio settings configured correctly. Because whether it's something really obvious where you're playing and it just takes hours until you hear the result, or whether it's something very subtle where you're pretty sure you played something else than what you just recorded, it is very annoying and very frustrating, but incredibly easy to solve if you know how. So let me show you how to start on the right foot with Studio One, what makes Studio One unique when it comes to latency compensation, and how to make sure that no matter how large your project is, you can always record instantaneously with no latency at all. Let's check it out. And today we want to focus on the concept of dropout protection, which a lot of people struggle a little bit with in Studio One. Basically, it's a setting that ensures us to find the best possible latency setting for a recording situation, which is then again one of the most important factors when it comes to having a good recording experience in the first place. But in order to understand that better, let's first talk about what latency even means in audio and why it's so meaningful to us. So the input latency is basically the time that it takes for your interface to translate that real world signal, like me speaking into this microphone right now, into these nice looking digital waveforms that you see in your DAW, in your music software. And the output latency is the opposite of that. That is basically how long does it take for your interface to convert these nice looking waveforms into something that can be sent to your analog speakers. So now that we know that, our first instinct is, okay, I should put this as low as I possibly can, right? Maybe even lower than 64 samples, just to get that input and output latency as low as possible, because that's gonna feel the most natural, right? It's gonna be such a short delay between that analog and that digital world that I almost forget that I'm in a digital recording environment. It's gonna feel real. But the problem with that is that your CPU has to work so much harder to get the job done faster. Think of it this way. You're having a really complicated math equation that you have to solve. And somebody says, you have 10 hours to solve it. Well, that's enough time to just open up Google, you know, and to look into it. But if somebody says you have 10 seconds to solve this, then you have to work infinitely harder to get there. Well, not infinitely, well, 10 seconds. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sure you're getting my point. So... That's the same for CPUs, right? The less time you grant your CPU to process something, the harder the CPU has to work to get it done. And that is especially a problem on older and slower systems. So what's Studio One's approach to this ancient problem that's been around as long as DOS and interfaces? Well, our approach is to separate that latency and divide it into two different ones. So the first one is the device block size. That's the native latency, as we say, of your interface. Whereas the processing is basically an independent latency for all the things that don't have to be recorded and monitored. Because if you think about it, the only things that you need with really low latency are the things that you're recording or the things you're monitoring. Why would you need to hear something that you're playing back with low latency? You know, maybe after hitting the space bar, it would take a little bit longer, maybe 10 milliseconds until you hear what you have, but that doesn't matter, right? And even though this seems quite obvious when you think about it, this was quite revolutionary when we introduced this back in version three. So what's the gain? Well, basically you can have a massive project even on your 2008 laptop and you can still record some drum patterns on top in real time. Usually that's not that easy to do. So when you know this, then you also realize that you should actually never adjust your audio device block size in Studio One. Why not? Well, because this should always be as low as you can allow your monitoring to go before you hear your CPU peak. Everything else you would just do with the processing. When you would run out of CPU, because of the playback needing so many resources, you would rather go to the processing tab and then put the dropout protection higher, right? That makes more sense because then you can still play with low latency, but your CPU has to work less hard because all the stuff that's happening in the background is being compensated. Now you might also realize why when you create a song and you press here in your performance meter, you can only adjust your dropout protection, but not your interface block size. We don't want you to touch your interface block size unless it's absolutely necessary. There's only one more thing that we have to do before we can take advantage of these amazing possibilities when it comes to native low latency monitoring. And that is to go down to the mixer here and ensure that the green Z for the instrument rack is actually enabled. As soon as that's turned on, any instrument track 
that has monitoring enabled will turn the assigned instrument into one that's actually taking advantage of the native device block size of 64 samples and not the processing block size of 512 samples, which would be way too much for monitoring. What's really great is that this low latency monitoring, as you can see, is not just available for instrument tracks, but also for audio tracks. In order for that to work, we have to enable the green Z here at the master bus. All right, so that's all there is to it. Hopefully you have a better idea now how to adjust your block size when you run out of CPU. And hopefully this will ensure that you can always record in real time, no matter how big your sessions are. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to make sure that everything that you record is exactly what you get when you play it back again. So be sure to tune in for that as well. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you next time. Thank you.